uh, Dr. Duncan Robertson, uh, we spoke to only a week ago, is here to give you the latest. Now, he's an academic at Loughborough University School of Business and Economics. Duncan, morning. Morning. Thanks for having me back. No, look, it's a, it's a pleasure. You're, you're great on the statistics of all, the, of all this stuff as well. And I know that you've been looking into how you close a society down without permanently ruining it. Well, I mean, you know, last time I, I phoned you last week, I mean, it was a very different place. And, uh, you know, a week is a very long time in pandemic. So, the, the, you know, when we were talking last week, people were sort of walking around and just their days were going on very much as normal. But now we're in this sort of phase where numbers are doubling and then doubling again and doubling again. And it's, uh, you know, we're sort of in what's called the exponential uh, curve. Mm. So basically, it's rather like, I don't know if you remember getting an old-fashioned calculation, you press number two, and then you press times and times, and yes. then equals, and it gets four, eight, sixteen. And that's the sort of thing we're doing at the moment. So we're very much in this rapidly growing phase. It's not doubling every day. It's doubling, I don't know, I have to check, but about every week. Now, look, I, I saw a really interesting, I think it was done by Channel 4 Dispatches. In fact, I retweeted it this morning on my, on my Twitter account, which people can see at 9am Ben. And it was a, it was a, a doctor and, and statistician, I think, who said, look, in normal influenza, and I'm not going to go into all of the, the, the stat, uh, statistics because it's really complicated, but in essence, if you do nothing and you still go about and you talk to people and, and don't social distance, normal influenza, you would infect potentially 14 people if you had the disease with coronavirus it's that much more infectious you would you would potentially uh, infect 59,000 people i mean the difference between the two is unbelievable yeah so i think what he was saying is the difference between flu where you infect 1.1 people and uh, coronavirus where i think he was citing the figures of about 3 makes a huge difference yeah. and that's called the reproduction rate of these um, these uh, diseases so a good way of sort of explaining it is to think about you know if you've got a chessboard maybe you know uh, we're all doing this sort of guided home learning at the moment with our kids get a chessboard and uh, sort of put one grain of rice in the first square then two double it put two in the next square and four in the next square and go on and you know, that'll give you an idea about exponential growth and so after sort of 26 squares, you'll get the population of the UK. I suggest you don't do this in practice, which is already bad enough with panic by. But, you know, after 33 squares, you've got the population of the world. And after 64 squares, you've got a, you've got a lot. So um, really, that's what we're dealing with. And that's when you double it, um, just double it times two. And in here, we're doubling times three. So you can see it's a huge problem. And look, from a, from a, from a business and economics perspective, I mean, I... I <sighs> How do you how do you try to maintain some well there's no normality I, I get that but try to to create a new normal how do you do that Well what I'm doing is I'm I'm sort of you know going back to literature there's uh, there's a branch of sociology called um, uh, it's called the strength of weak ties it's kind of thinking about how you set up social networks we're all used to connecting on social networks well, what I'm doing practically is to reach out to the people that I haven't spoken to for 20 years and actually mm. reconnect with those. And so these people are just really important in maintaining your social network, you know, your sort of online social network it has to be, and just making sure that you're continually connected to these people. And they're going to be really important to you. So setting up, I don't know, whatever you do, WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, just reconnecting, I think, is important. So that's what I'm doing. And, and lots of people are coming to terms with with uh, homeschooling and stuff today, and I, well, I yeah. hope that's going okay. Thank um, you. Uh, yeah, but have you have you tried? Have you got homeschooling at home? We have, we have. How's and, it going? Uh, uh, well, we've got the chessboard out, and we're up to <laughs> square four. <laughs> 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 I love that. That's too good. My, you see, my, and it's an odd time, isn't it? You know, my eldest was about was you know right in the zone of A levels. Um, a bit concerned because his mocks didn't go quite the way he wanted them to because they don't. Um, because he's good at exams and I was really you know powering ahead with that. And he's worried and concerned and what happens now. And my younger one actually, I, I his teacher sort of sent an email out to everybody yesterday, wishing them luck and saying, look, it's important to have some fun, but these are these are the tasks we want you to achieve. And I kind of got the impression that grudgingly he thought that was a good idea too well i mean yeah i mean the, the good thing about this compared to you know when we were perhaps doing it is is there are so many resources out there so you've got you know youtube videos you've got khan academy you've got you know and the schools are uh, you know uh, between them are producing some really good mm. resources so you know if you want to know about why 
this uh, social distancing is so important. I suggest you go to YouTube and look up Charlie Says Social Distancing. So that's the sort of thing where, you know, I and you know, many of my colleagues are just using this to to think about how we can help explain things. And we're all going through this. And there are going to be so many teachers around the, around the country and around the world who are trying to help children, help adults at whatever age. So just use the resources that are out there. Look, I don't know, you might not know the answer to this, so it's, and it's, so it's, it's fine not to, but it's just popped into my head. You know, we had the whole H1N1, uh, what, a decade or so ago, which was, a, which was a, um, a strain of flu, a swine flu. I think it came from, I think it came from pigs in America to start with and went around the world. We didn't shut society down then. Why have we had to do it this time? Well, I think that was a different type. Um, I'm not an epidemiologist, no, but I, I think that's I'm important sorry. to say, because um, there are lots of people trying to you know, give answers to these questions. And it's very important to think about the sort of sources of um, information that people are, are going towards. So, you know, for me, I'm looking at uh, the NHS website and the uh, um, Centers for Disease, Disease Control in the US and the World Health Organization. And these are the sources that will give you you know, r- robust information. I think it's very important that we don't sort of allow, you know, armchair oh, yeah. experts to come and, and talk about it. But I can find out. I can, you know, go well, away you and do research that? it. Yeah, can we, can we do that? And we'll maybe give you a call later on in the week. That would be really helpful. Of course. Thank you, yeah, Duncan. No Good luck with the chessboard. Thank you very much. Thanks ever yeah, so much. Thank on. you. Thanks, thanks. I have a feeling we'll get Duncan on the show plenty in the in the uh, coming weeks. Uh, uh, he's just brilliant, actually. Uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. It's good to have him on the show. Dr. Duncan Robertson from uh, Loughborough University.